Okay. Uh, welcome, uh, everyone. So today we will continue our journey uh, with the topic of soul plan to share the wisdom about pre-birth planning or soul plan. Idea is to help you understand the big picture, you know, what happens in our life, why it happens, and that hopefully will help you in your sadhana, in your meditation, so that you can get answers of the questions that you may have in your mind. The most important point is that each one of us is capable of finding our own answers. So we should not be looking at someone for answers. We should be able to find ourselves. You are your own guru, you are your own god, own master. And that's why we have to look inward. However, there are certain topics which clarifies, which explains, which uh, share, you know, the light on certain thing that helps you in understanding what it means. Otherwise, it's simply said, okay, you are your own master, look inward, inner self it will guide you. But to get to that point is critical. Once you reach that point of, understanding and once you do it one or twice you know the moment you f you know have that own experience because once you do you feel like okay this is my first time maybe it was a fluke once you do over and over then you truly know your power so a lot uh, we are talking about uh, is from uh, rob's work or sonia's work uh, this is something which, uh, as we have talked about from the books, from the workshop and uh, some other experiences, these topics, uh, not easy, but they are simple if we understand it that way. And that's the most important point. So spiritual awakening, uh, we must all understand that, you know, it is something which will help you. every individual once you get it. Why? Because universe is never trying to punish you. Universe is helping you as a soul to move from one place to the other. That means to progress. That means your soul's journey. So it doesn't matter what's happening in your life. It is for your benefit. Now to decode it, to understand how in general it works. Because when you are going through one of those phases, it's not easy. When someone tells you it is for your own benefit or any such thing, sometimes it is very difficult to really accept that it is really for my benefit. So what happens is if we understand that I'm going through a tough phase, but it was my own plan. Own plan? for a, some benefit, then it's easy to go through that phase. Because when we are going through a phase in life, which is abundance, and, you know, everything going good in terms of relationship, work, family, um, health, we feel I'm the controller. It is all because of my good deeds. But when things go against our wish, we feel we have done something, it is my bad karma, and all those negative factors comes in our mind. But if we understand whatever good or bad is happening is as per our pre-birth planning, this is our soul plan, then we understand that there is nothing wrong. It may be a tough situation, but it is for my benefit. And when we say my benefit means the souls, physical body is just a carrier. Ultimately, we are doing it for the soul. So today we'll take the topic of, uh, topic of miscarriage. Try to understand how this works because typically this is very devastating uh, for the family, especially for the mother, and we may not be able to you know, see it through uh, that what good may come from it. So we'll take a, a, you know, a, a kind of a real case uh, story here, which is... Uh, through a, you know, there are people who can uh, do the past life regression, there are channels, uh, people who can get you through your 
the details of your soul plan and from uh, such example we'll be referring uh, to understand uh, how it is what it is done and from one example at least you will be able to see what is the theory behind it that why a soul would choose such an experience i mean if given a choice everybody will feel that oh i will oh, i will choose uh, something good you know progress love abundance why would i choose uh, suffering but that is thinking of physical body we have to experience both like we talked about karma you have to experience both side in order to release it and without releasing you are not moving forward so to understand what kind of healing and how it can come through through such experience what could be good in such experience and we are talking about miscarriage and what can a person learn from this so these are some of the things that if we understand about this topic it will also help in keeping this in mind when there could be some other challenges in life so miscarriage uh, this experience uh, you know there are things that we have to uh, keep in mind that this can be uh, we'll be taking one uh, example which in this case uh, the characters in this example or the story uh, is between rebecca and kevin so uh, rebecca and calvin uh, these are uh, in this like present life these are the names and then we'll see as we move along that uh, how this explain uh, this topic and you know when we are talking about specifically a miscarriage it's often you know it's a combination of so uh, shock grief anger guilt all those things uh, like in any combination uh, because uh, not every experience is same two people having this experience will have a different combination so in this uh, example uh, uh, rebecca still carried some unresolved grief as well as guilt and self blame and you see these are very common low level energy emotions which we all carry to different degrees grief we go through guilt you know time to time you may have and self blame we all have a story about ourselves certain things we say i can do this certain things we will say i cannot do that i am good in this i am not good in that we blame ourselves it's so easy to get into this self blame game so self forgiveness had been a lesson uh, for rebecca and she had struggled in the past life then that is one of the reason why she had picked up this particular experience in the life so what had happened and this Uh, she understood once she went through this channeling and past life regression that she had brought this lesson forward in the current lifetime for healing and she was struggling one more time so this was coming from the previous life she struggled and even in this life she was struggling so when we see such lessons in our life or in the lives of others it is really helpful if we look at it with compassion love patience also respect why remember it is the most courageous souls who would agree and go through such things because they have agreed before birth to face and heal the wounds of the soul soul is nothing but energy so you are filling the gaps in that energy pattern so in this case after the miscarriage she blamed again herself for it because it's coming from previous life for a different reason in this life again the same thing happened uh, she was in the self blame game what did i do wrong what did not i eat or what did i not do properly i did not take care of my baby you know all those uh, natural kind of self blaming emotions that 
you can imagine a person is going through. It's very difficult for the mom um, or the family. So in this case, it's important to understand Rebecca's and Calvin's past life. And the past life is coming from, uh, there was a fort. Uh, it was a military uh, installation uh, in US. Uh, and this is a story of about 1800. So you can imagine at that time, and uh, she was uh, in the fort and she liked to manage the men and uh, she developed a close bonding with you know many of them because as you are in the army or you are in the group uh, you do have uh, some bonding she had a good relationship with calvin and uh, she felt uh, as if he's uh, her son and during that time when the chief was uh, out of the fort uh, the fort was attacked so she had to do like, you know, taking the command and okay, you have to assign different people, different thing. And you have to uh, let the men, the soldiers go for the, you know, defend the battle or defend the fort. So once you are in the battle, you are at risk. And she had to, uh, you know, also send Calvin and uh, went out. And there was an arrow which hit uh, to his heart and he was killed in just a couple of minutes. So she could not overcome that guilt, pain and suffering that she had sent Calvin outside and because she felt Calvin as her son, uh, you know, she was in grief in uh, self-induced kind of self-blame that because of me, Calvin died. And when she died uh, at the age of 49 with medical condition, which is related to heart. So... This is the thing that is coming from the past. Now, when we are talking about pre-birth planning, it is important in this story that this communication which is happening. So, uh, Calvin, and this is the through the chan channeling that Rebecca is understanding, that Calvin is telling her that, hey, you did send me out, but that was not you know, don't blame yourself for the cause of my death in untimely manner. He would have died a few months away in another battle in any case where she was not there to protect him. This is how it was meant to be. So that was his pre-birth planning at that time. That's how it was planned. So, during this whole pre-birth planning thing, her soul was made up of healer, artist, teacher. You're talking about what you would like to work in this lifetime, you know, kind of thing, because that's what the pre-birth planning is. So when they were planning for this lifetime, uh, Calvin wanted to her to forgive herself. That's what Calvin wanted for Rebecca that, hey, I want you to forgive yourself. Rebecca wanted that, okay, I want to repay for what I took from you because still she's thinking because of her, he lost his life because the arrow was hit and he died in the battle. So Rebecca wanted to repay means wanted to give back the life. That means uh, give birth and give life to Calvin. And Calvin said, okay, I do want to continue our relationship because it has been going on for many lifetimes. Uh, he wanted to be part of this planning and uh, Rebecca was clear, but I don't want to be a man. I'll be a woman because she thought I'll give birth. That way I'm repaying, giving her, giving the child uh, the birth. And uh, Calvin still asked her, will you be safe knowing that I'll be there only for a very short time with you? Because, you know, miscarriage means you're not there for the whole life. And uh, he did tell her that I have only so much time left because this is the time uh, he can use as a gift to her. He wanted to help her. Somehow Calvin had doubt whether it will work or not, knowing that she's carrying that energy for previous life that she is not able to overcome. She wants to work on the soul plan that I will work on this, but not able to execute. But if Rebecca is able to forgive herself for the miscarriage, 
then she will be able to heal the guilt and the blame from both the past and the current lifetime. So as a soul, she had to go through this experience and be successful in overcoming to, you know, cover that gap in the soul or you can say that guilt, the blame, those emotions which are coming up from previous life. So Calvin told her clearly that he's not coming back into physical life during your present lifetime. He's he going to come back about five years later with a different set of parents. So that means miscarriage means the soul is not coming in the physical world because he does have a plan, but he changed those plans that, okay, five years back, later come with a different set of parents because, uh, you know, he wanted to really help. And uh, he says, you didn't handle my, in the previous lifetime, the way he was, uh, you know, killed and he died like you thought you would. So she had planned it even in the previous incarnation, but she could not successfully execute it. She was still blaming herself. Because you see, you come with a plan, but then you come in physical body and now you have free will. How are you going to use free will? Whether you'll be able to execute it in this lifetime or not, it depends on what you do in the physical world. So she did plan last time also, but she was not successful. So, and Calvin was very clear that, okay, I will help you. I can't, you know, uh, let you go until you do. I mean, he really wanted her to overcome that emotion. He wanted to be around her, to comfort you. He said, hey, we have been friends for too long that, you know, I leave abruptly now. So I will have one more chance, you know, one more life. So I have only this much time because I do have a plan for myself for the next but in between, let's do, you know, kind of one more incarnation for him. So this lack of forgiveness really hurts us. Uh, because what happens is it's really preventing you from experiencing total happiness. Because you are blaming everything. You are blaming yourself for everything. So what happens? You cannot live your life peacefully or joyfully. Because everything you're blaming, oh, I did this, I did that, I'm not good in this, I'm not good in that. You're staying in that grief, you're staying in that self-blame and hence you're not living your full life. So, Calvin is telling Rebecca that, you know, this has become a, a thought pattern for her, a habitual way of thinking and feeling that it needs to be released. You have to let go, stop self-blaming. So it is the best not to argue with our thoughts or feelings because feelings eventually comes, you know, you have thoughts and then give rise to feeling, which give rise to emotions and so on. So yes, we don't want to argue with our thoughts, rather strengthen them with our attention, right? Uh, we may observe them and let them drift by gently without judgment as we do during meditation. So don't try to control it. Just manage your thought. That's what I would highly recommend to everyone. That's what we try in meditation. Don't try to control. Controlling nobody likes. So your thoughts will rebel. And when I say thoughts will rebel, means basically it is your own energy. It's not like thought have something different. So in this example, what's happening is, again, you see it's taking you towards meditation. It's not just a question of, you know, you learn something and fixing. Your fix is inside you. These uh, theoretical, these wisdom, these uh, concepts will help you how to go about it. Otherwise, when you sit in meditation, you get disturbed very easily. So now you know it's best not to argue. You are strengthening them with your attention. Don't try to control. Let them drift. Let them, they will come and go. But improve your meditation. Keep working on it. Now, let's get back to the story. So Rebecca feels that it sounds easy, but obviously it's not. Otherwise, obviously she would have completed this 
task uh, in the previous life and if she's not able to means it's not easy and again she was reminded by calvin that hey are you trying to complicate what is simple but you see at the soul level it is relatively easy but as soon as you come in human form you know you have love emotion attachments and all those things kicks in so again, as a soul, you know, the conversation here is that, hey, don't overcomplicate it. Just do it. So it's a question of that decision. It's a question of, you know, you have come to a point where it's easy, but you have come to the edge of it. Now you have to just cross it. And we know as a human being that it's not easy. We get, we all get, you know, stuck in that zone. So the decision here was, okay, let it go. Just release it. Now, that understanding is the key to helping you unlock your heart. We all have certain emotions to deal with. That's the purpose we all have come in human form. We have to find out what could be that. And there are ways we talked about in a couple of weeks, we will be talking about specifically those simple things. Uh, and one key factor is whatever is happening again and again in your life, it is giving you hint. If something is repeating, happening again and again, and it is increasing in intensity, certainly it has to do something with your soul plan. So unlocking the heart is very critical. So we have to really understand this. So soul's perspective, like, you know, if you see, because human, you know, could be different uh, things, but for soul is pure energy and pure, okay, this is the energy I want to work on, which is, this is emotion and this is what I want to lead, whatever my planning is. So in this case, again, Calvin will be just in mother's womb. That means not coming out. But in the time, that he will be in mother's womb means Rebecca's uh, with Rebecca. Uh, he will have that, uh, you know, the experience, the, you say, the pure joy, uh, the delightful moments. So he will be hearing it, he will be feeling it, experiencing it, and filling his heart with those joyful moments. Now, he will be helping Rebecca to release the grief to overcome that emotion, but she's not able to do that. At the same time, uh, you know, uh, life is a celebration. There is always time for more life. So in one life, we are not trying to do everything. The soul continues the journey. So it's not that, okay, what if, what if? No, don't worry. In this life, you are working on something. In next, the next, the next, there is many more uh, planning, many more lives will come. So what's being communicated here, it really doesn't matter um, in case of a mother who gives uh, birth to a child who lives for only a couple of hours, who lives for a couple of days, a couple of months, a couple of years, or decades, or whole life, right? There is never a concept of incomplete life. It's just a matter of what was planned. If the soul planned, miscarriage means not even coming out of the womb, that was the plan. If the soul does take, like birth, come into this human form, but lives only for some days, some months, some year, that's what the plan was. And there is a reason for everything. But what are the usual uh, you know, the factors. So to have little experience more or much more, what is it, right? Uh, yes, every time the soul is experiencing something more than what the soul experienced in the previous incarnation. If the soul says my learning is this and I need only this much time, or I only need to experience this, then so be it. In this case, it was forgiveness. So 
Kelvin was clear that I don't need to come out. And you know, this much is enough uh, because she just had to learn how to forgive. In some cases, in a different scenario, uh, the child, uh, you know, the soul may not be ready. You know, when you have infant soul, baby soul, you're not ready for the whole human incarnation. You may, the soul may plan that, okay, uh, you know, I will come for a couple of days or weeks or months, you know, then we say, oh my God, I lost my child, so young age. Obviously, it's very difficult for parents and family to deal with it, but as soul plan, as uh, you know, pre birth planning, we must understand that there was a reason for it. So, in each one of these examples that we are talking about, uh, the soul of that child is thankful to the mother for giving this experience, for agreeing for this, uh, you know, soul planning that, okay, I will come for such a, a period and then you know i will learn this so no matter what the time period is there is never a short or long these are all our relative expressions right so the mother is serving in a compassionate way um, and taking care of that infant soul the soul is trying to teach something to the mother or you know there is always an exchange of this learning now in this particular uh, case, once Rebecca understood the self-inflicted guilt, this issue that she has been, uh, you know, carrying, uh, of course, it was helpful because then the person is able to overcome that. Now the person is seeing that as a learning. And in this case, it was end for Rebecca, you know, this, uh, what um, they call it as a poisonous mystery of all those what if, you know, because when you're self-blaming, you, you always think, oh, what if I would have done this? What if, uh, you know, I have done that or this, or maybe the, you know, you think that things would have been different if I would have done something differently. But if it was soul plan, it was supposed to be like this. So stop blaming yourself. That is the most important because this is self-inflicted guilt and then whole life we keep blaming ourselves for something minor to a major thing what has happened in our life but if we understand there was a reason for it you may not understand what was the learning that's possible but at least you can understand that there is a reason for it so it should help you overcome that emotion You know, so the question does come that when you're looking from the soul's perspective that how would uh, our soul encourage us to respond? How does the soul view, uh, you know, such an experience? So sometimes it's not easy to accept or even, you know, go through uh, such uh, uh, things. So we have to understand Calvin's side. Uh, so what was Calvin's learning? Calvin had difficulty feeling loved in the past. Feeling loved means you are getting love from others and, uh, you know, there is a value. People appreciate you and all those things. So Calvin wanted to feel the love, but not to forget it. That means, you know, many times we go through certain things, positive things in our life, and then we forget it. We don't recognize it. We take it for granted. So Calvin wanted to feel love and also remember it. See, what happens is when one is born, the person forgets what was the experience in the womb. In mother's womb, the child is going through a lot of emotions. But the moment you come out, you forget all that. So this was the reason Calvin decided that it will be helpful for me. I will help you in overcoming the self-guilt. You help me because this is one of my old issues that I'm not able to feel love and retain that feeling. I don't want to forget it when I'm ending my life. So he wanted to feel love 
and be able to take it back so that it really heals some of his own karma. So that was the give and take between Calvin and Rebecca. So Calvin asked that this be the gift that Calvin needed so that he can come back in a full pregnancy. And then, of course, birth in a future lifetime with more faith in humanity and the love that is in the world because he's not able to retain it. So he goes back with the feeling that he is not loved. And that is his cycle, which he is trying to overcome. So you see, that's where the fever planning comes. It's give and take. Now, in this case, of course, we are talking about exact between the two souls, it could be okay, you are learning from this, helping other one. So that's why it's a soul family. It's not necessarily everything is between just two souls. So in this way, if Calvin can return to the spirit world with that awareness, carrying that uh, love uh, or you know, the feeling, the memory, so that he can fix his cycle and he can come back in the full pregnancy in the nap next lifetime. So, you know, there is no one reason. It's not like, okay, this was the only reason which uh, can explain any miscarriage. No, there could be, like every case will be unique. So you can only imagine that there will be different reason for every different story. And the same thing happens. Doesn't matter it's miscarriage, it could be a murder, it could be starvation, it could be marriage, love, any kind of thing that we go through, there is a reason. There is too many things to be learned uh, in the human incarnation, too many facets, you know, different ways that we go through, depending on what emotion the soul is trying to work on. So sometimes a miscarriage is planned as an exchange of emotion or emotional impact for emotional impact. So sometime if one partner abandons another in a lifetime, then the one who is abandoned, you know, the miscarriage, uh, the child, the one who did this abandoning is the grieving mother. Because you are trying to balance the karma. So again, who abandoned who? You know, uh, it's, a, it's a question, but uh, this could be another reason that why this miscarriage was planned. So the mother is now, uh, you know, feeling the other side. Remember, balance of karma means you have to feeling, you have to experience both. Once you abandon someone and in second case, somebody abandoned you. So it's just balancing of karma. That means we have to gracefully accept and experience that emotions without any negative thoughts and all. And then we can release it, end of the story, and we the soul goes for the next. If we are not able to release, then you keep going and experience the same thing. So it's not a question that mother is punished for having abandoned a partner in a previous lifetime. No, there is no punishment. It's just a question of completing the syllabus, completing the course, completing that emotional uh, thing that you have to experience. So it's not a punishment, it's just experience. So soul level, we understand that, okay, uh, you know, this is what has happened and we are trying to now balance it. The whole thing is in this, we have to overcome the low level emotions and go for the higher one, compassion, empathy, true love, oneness. But in human form, what happens? We are mostly focused on the low level emotions, the energies, the suffering. So you have to open your heart, you have to expand your heart, and hence you will be improving your energy, your vibration, your consciousness. So there are many, many different reasons one can plan, one could go, go through this, you know, to teach itself hope, to feel what motherhood would be like, you know, without necessarily going through entire life as a mother, 
there is uh, nothing that makes this experience, you know, man versus woman so profoundly as bearing of a child. So this experience of mother itself, uh, you know, it's a great emotion. It's a uh, uh, lot of things that you go through. So miscarriage can teach you resilience, hope, belief, believe in self. Right? Of course, forgiveness comes. And you see, not only this, once you overcome, you can share, you can help others. If you go through different examples, different women, different mothers you see, uh, who have gone through miscarriage, they may all had uh, different uh, experience in the past. For some, it may be the very first time, for the soul, I mean. And for some, they may have tried many times, but not overcoming that issue, just like Rebecca. The one who is able to, who can share the wisdom, who can help others, that itself is a form of service. So, the souls which are stuck, they have tried, they have tried, but they are failing. If someone can come and help, it's again a win-win for both. Soul who is overcoming it and the soul who is able to help others. That's why sharing of wisdom is a very high level of positive energy. So when the soul learns self-forgiveness, it strengthens later incarnation. then it is not easy for the world to tell those souls that you are not good, you are not worthy, and you know, all those negative things. So you see, this is a very critical, very important lesson in one's life, from, again, soul perspective. Because you see how easy it is. People just keep telling, you know, when you are a child, hey, you can't do anything. And people just say, uh, jokingly, but then the child takes it to the heart and believes in it that, yeah, I'm not good in this. So that's why this uh, self-forgiveness is a very key thing. It kind of erases uh, the whole blackboard, you know, you have a, a whiteboard, whatever, you know, you can think of is, uh, is full, you have written a lot of things. Now it is, again, a blank page. You can write any story on it. It gives you an opportunity to become anyone, to do whatever you want, because now there is no restriction. You don't have that feeling, I'm not good in this, I'm not good in that. You have erased all that. You can draw any picture. You can be anyone. You can become anyone. You can do anything, whatever. All those negative chattering in your mind, I'm not good, I cannot do, all those things are gone. And then later incarnation, you come and you take the higher level chapters, higher level topics, because you have already taken care of this very key, important negative emotion. See, that's why we say, I am Brahmasmi. It is not easy, but to have that experience that, yes, I am part of the universe, I can do anything, I can become, and is, is extremely important. So you see, when you're grieving, it's very important to understand who you are grieving for. Are you grieving for the child? Are you grieving for the child's lost potential? Because, hey, if the child would have come, he could have done this, he could have done that. Are you grieving for the lost hope? You had a hope from your child? And now your hopes are all gone? So child has no ill will against you. Don't think the child is blaming you that my mother, my parents didn't take care of me and this and that. No, it was the plan. You did not do anything wrong. You are not at fault. If you have this understanding, it should help you overcoming that challenge in your life. Let's take it a little differently. Some people, they are grieving the death of their parents. Because so much was left unsaid. There was so much in you that you wanted to share, you wanted to talk to them and you either did not or could not, whatever the issue is. Sometimes you say, I'm not talking to my parents or whether they are upset with you, you are upset with them, doesn't matter, you're not talking. 
all of a sudden you lose your parents and now you are in guilt. I could not do this for them. I did not say to them, I love them, but I never express, you know, all those kind of things becomes guilt. So if you need to say, if you need to communicate, don't get stuck in this low level ego and all those things. Just say it, do it. You want to show your gratitude, show it. Don't hold it. Open your heart. If you do that, then losing parents, just like we were talking about losing your child, will not cause more suffering emotionally and get stuck in this, you know, the soul or um, the karma thing. We get stuck, the guilt and all those things, uh, the grief, when we wanted to do, we wanted to say or things and we did not. So masters understand that this is not a punishment. This is not something for you that you lost something and all. It is all planning for the soul to move forward. So this is uh, the most important thing to understand as a part of this. Next week, we will be taking the next topic. <laughs>